the battle for purgatory. Any sign of them yet, Sergeant? Captain Vaughan's voice crackled over the communicator. Sergeant Cern scoured the ragged, windswept terrain for what seemed like the hundredth time, before raising the handheld unit to his mouth. Nothing yet, sir. We got the whole of this sector under surveillance, but there's nothing showing up anyway. All right. Keep me informed of any developments, worn out. The communicator crackled into silence. A gust of chill wind whipped across the rocky plain. Cern shivered. Whether it was the biting wind that made him do it, or a deeper sense of foreboding, he did not like to admit. Ever since purgatory had been reclaimed from the Imperium from the low-tech frontier state into which it had fallen, a small force of Cadian shock troops had been posted on the planet. The Imperial Guardsmen were to support the inexperienced and poorly equipped Purgatory Militia. Based at the only spaceport on the planet, the Cadians undertook regular patrols to the outlying human settlements in the unforgiving wilderness. Purgatory was a cold, unwelcoming world. Much of its surface covered by dark, brooding forests, ice-capped mountain ranges and bleak plains ravaged by high winds and regular hurricanes. As a result, the native Purgatorians lived within tightly constructed, isolated settlements of sturdy, ground-hugging dwellings. Buildings over two stories were few and far between. The inhabitants of the isolated settlements subsisted by mining base metal ores from the bedrock of the planet and scratching a living from the nutrient-weak topsoil, while the planetary militia defended the labourers from the indigenous mammalian carnivores with their primitive shotguns and crossbows. Cern had hated purgatory as soon as he set eye on it from the dropship's windows. A grey, unwelcoming place populated by grey, unwelcoming people. That had been 18 months ago, and the passage of time had done nothing to improve its appeal. A dust devil skittered across the ridge, grey ash dancing in the eddies of the tiny vortex. The wind tugged at the guardsmen's clothes, as if searching for a way in, as an invading army might hunt out a weak point in their enemy's defences. Sergeant Cern turned his gaze away from the monotony of the landscape for a moment, and glanced at the ragtag collection of men that made up the patrol. They were mainly the part-time members of the militia, who worked in Purgatory's mines when not on their tour of duty. The poorly armed and even more poorly armoured Purgatorians did not come up to the Cadian sergeant's standards for soldiery. Not by a long way. They were all either scrawny and unhealthy specimens or overweight and already past their prime. The worst threat they had ever had to face up to was an enraged tribe of the indigenous primitive humanoid population. Apart from himself, the only other guardsman among the party was Kratz and Dulst, both seasoned fighters who had served under him on several campaigns across the eastern fringes of the Imperium. Each of them had seen their share of death and destruction, and yet here, on this blighted world, without having been involved in proper armed conflict for over a year, the troopers felt an almost perverse thrill at the possibility of invaders having landed on purgatory. The endless waiting and sentry duties had begun to make them all feel uneasy, afraid that they might be losing the edge to their finely honed skills. Training and target practice were no substitute for the brutal learning experience of war. Nothing honed a soldier's reflexes like the adrenaline-charged moment in the thick of battle when you charged an orc bunker or stood up to a slavering Tyranid horde. You either learned and learned fast, or you didn't see another sunrise to make the same mistake again. So as soon as reports had started to come in from other outposts on the planet of attacks by rampaging bloodthirsty troops wearing an archaic design of power armour, accompanied by snarling monsters, while many of the native populace were overcome by panic and 
broke down into a state of hysteria. The Cadians were filled with a morbid exhilaration. The mining fort had immediately been put on full battle alert, and patrols were sent out to report on the advance of the Chaos Warband. A loud explosion, only a few metres away, took CERN from his reverie. Rock and dirt showered outwards from the point of impact, throwing one of the militiamen backwards from the ridge, his face and chest reduced to a bloody ruin by the shell which had detonated just in front of him. Sergeant CERN narrowed his eyes and swiftly scanned the boulder-dotted plain, and then, where before there had been nothing but the barren, rocky wilderness... There were suddenly several dark-armoured figures striding purposefully across the grey plain. Get down and return fire, yelled the trooper sergeant. Kratz and Dolst responded to their sergeant's command instantly. While it took the shocked militiamen several precious seconds to react, and then they did so more out of fear and surprise rather than because they were following orders. The Cadians fired blast after blast from their las guns at the assailants. It was as if they had just appeared out of nowhere. At first, the figures looked to CERN like space marines, possibly of the Dark Angels chapter, or members of the Blood Angels' infamous death company. But as the space marines continued their advance, he quickly recognised the enemy for what they really were. Curling horns and cruel spikes adorned the warriors' helmets and ceramite shoulder pads. However... Some of the attackers' suits seemed less flexible in their design, constructed from riveted plasteel plates. Images of death and chaos emblems covered the pitted and age-corroded power armour, along with graffitied curses and battle cries, while dead human eyes stared out from the withered heads hung on chains from the marines' belts. The winged skull crests marked these particular individuals as Night Lord Chaos Space Marines, the foul progeny of the Night Haunter himself. The Cadian's homeworld was the first line of defence for the Imperium against the tide of chaos which flowed from the Eye of Terror. The Imperial Guardsmen, recruited from Cadia, were all too familiar with the Chaos Space Marines. Due to the Traitor Legion's frequent forays to the planet's surface, the shocked troopers had already fought enemies such as the Night Lords on countless occasions. Mankind's representatives on Purgatory, however, had so far remained free from the attentions of the Minions of Chaos, isolated and cut off as the planet had been for so many millennia. CERN swallowed hard. The sudden emergence of the Night Lords from the seemingly featureless landscape, suggested a knowledge of infiltration and deployment built up over numerous conflicts. That, and the loose formation in which they now approached, and the fact that they were the first to contact the fort's defences, screamed a warning through the sergeant's consciousness. These were not ordinary Chaos Space Marines. They were hard-bidden veterans from the time of the Horus Heresy itself. CERN had faced the might of the Dark Gods of Chaos once before, and lived. But then it had been as part of a regiment of Imperial Guardsmen, now with only two troopers, and a handful of poorly trained miners under his command, and no heavy weapons support. He did not rate the patrol's chances of survival. The frontiersmen's weapons were proving ineffective against the solid armour of the veterans, Shotgun shells ricocheted from the plasteel plates or disintegrated harmlessly on impact. At best, the bolts from the militia's crossbows penetrated only a few centimetres into the toughened ceramite. The Cadian sergeant picked up his communicator. There was a click as something metallic landed among the stones behind him. There was a short, piercing burst of white noise, and the communicator overloaded in a shower of sparks as the looted haywire grenade took effect. Hearing a high-pitched hissing to his right, the sergeant spun round, anxiously, certain that he knew what was coming next. Just as he had suspected, the hiss suddenly became an angry, roaring blast, as the air was heated around them, and in a matter of seconds, guardsman Kratz became a dried husk, as a blast from a night lord's melter gun evaporated all the moisture from his body which then exploded in a burst of dust and calcified remains. 
The Night Lords were almost on them now, the patrol's weapons doing little to keep them at bay. Had the Chaos Space Marines not infiltrated their position to such an extent, at least the patrol might have had a chance to make it back to the fort. But now flight was impossible. The only option was to fight it out. Sergeant Cern pinpointed a barbaric warrior who had three head trophies swinging from his spiked suit and sighted along his bolt pistol. Squeezing the trigger, he fired off several shots directly at the Marine's helmet. Over the sound of gunfire from both sides, Cern thought he heard a roar of pain and he saw his target jerk backwards. Regaining his balance, the veteran raised his head and the Cadian saw the shattered stump of a demonic horn and exposed shredded tissue through the hole torn in the side of the helmet. Cern watched as the Chaos Space Marine raised an ornate bolter to fire and then inexplicably found himself thrown to the ground on the other side of the ridge. It took several seconds for his nervous system to register what had happened. The first thing that told him something was wrong was the sight of his ragged arm lying several metres away. Then suddenly, sickening awareness flooded his consciousness as he felt hot blood pumping from the ragged stump of his shoulder. With every adrenaline quickened heartbeat, pain engulfed him in a cold wave and he felt his stomach heave. Seeing their commanding officer fatally wounded, several of the frontiersmen lost the will to keep fighting in the face of such overwhelming odds. Dropping their useless weapons, they got to their feet, waving their arms in surrender. The Cadian troopers watched in helpless dismay, as each and every one of the men was cut down in a hail of autocannon fire. The remaining miners turned to run and came face to face with more of the death-dealing, chaos-cursed warriors. A second squad of Night Lords veterans had already infiltrated the patrol's position from behind. Who knew how long the callous killers had been waiting before they entered the fray? They had probably held off until they felt they would gain the most pleasure from the experience. Cutting down the doomed frontiersmen as they made their futile attempt to escape. No doubt they savoured every death spasm of the victims, relished every expression of utter despair on the dying men's faces. These were not the brave and honourable heroes like the veterans of the loyal Imperial chapters. The Night Lords had no qualms about gunning down innocents or those weaker than themselves. They had their own set of values. A riveted boot crunched down on top of the ridge and a black armoured figure stood over Sergeant Cern, gazing down malevolently from inside the hellish visage of his helmet. The one remaining horn making it appear lopsided and unbalanced. Fear suppressing the pain, racking his body, Cern shuffled over the dusty ground, dragging himself towards his severed arm and the bolt pistol still in its grip. The veteran watched as the guardsman tried pitifully to pull the weapon free of his dead hand, his fingers slipping on the blood-slicked butt. You should pray for death, Imperial Dog, the warrior growled, and then laughed, his mirth manifest as a cruel, guttural sound. Having savoured the moment, the Chaos Space Marine tired of the spectacle. Raising his bolter, the Night Lord fired. Veteran brother Nadrak strode among the carnage. Where he thought he still saw a flicker of movement, he fired off several rattling shots from his chain-fed autocannon. This was the point of the long war. It was not to wage some galaxy-spanning bloody crusade for the Dark Gods, like those feeble-minded berserkers loyal to the Blood God, but to kill and revel in the killing. And giving the Imperium a taste of the Night Lord's ruthless methods only served to provide even greater satisfaction. But this was only the beginning. The Night Lords had not finished with this pathetic world and all that it had to offer them. And once they were done, not a single soul would remain alive on the planet. Those who resisted their will, or those who were not fit for the slave labour camps, would die and the Night Lords would relish their dying. Soon this inhospitable world would seem to its inhabitants to have been 
paradise as they learnt of the horrors of the warp. Hell had come to purgatory. There we go, an oldie, but a goldie, but a Night Lords action. you got to love the Night Lords. They are vicious, vicious swine. Thank you, everybody supporting the channel. I appreciate it. Uh, you can see your name scrolling by here. If you would like to support the channel as well, please consider using the links in the description. It really helps, and also it really helps if you do like the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, and let me know in the comments what you thought. I will be back again with more stuff very, very soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Cheers.